you were going to say about why you thought that was part of technology? Because you're using um, you're using your knowledge in a social cultural way, but you're using historical elements and time elements in ways. You know, you're thinking you're using your cultural knowledge of you know what what was used when you were a child or how how. Why is this effective? How can you combine it with a tool, you know, of your generation? Which, you know, I'm thinking of my mother. She didn't have a electric blender, but she did have a mobile head thing. She and she was able to to use the tools that she has. Well, as the technology becomes part of our lives, it doesn't mean that you're discarding the old. It means that you are able to move them around in the social and historical place and combine them, and our children will continually do this. Right. So, And they're continually navigating new worlds effortlessly. Yeah, it's yeah. older people, us, I mean, you know, that has trouble with how to bump on the iPhones. They, they but I, I still wonder in terms of the, if you have these added cognitive abilities that have been enhanced by your bilingualism and your biculturalism, how can you take that resource that you have in a classroom with 20 kids fully proficient and, and transfer it over to the world of technology. Uh, how can you take that? Well, is, well it, is it the example you used earlier of, um, of being able to, to, to look at indigenous ways of doing things? Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about uh, Amitad del Mundo, the middle of the world, where, where um, the indigenous were able to not predict, but to very scientifically identify where the middle of the world was more exact than a GPS can right. do. Right. And that was not a... a well, as Belinda said, um, technology does have its own language, and so that the language fluency that they acquire in the first and the second language it, it okay, uses that's, tools to that's right. that third to learn language. the third language. To turn that third language. And I, and I know that they, I know, I'm not a technology person, but they call it about a, a different space. You know, being in a different space. Maybe it's the fifth Hi, dimension or yes. another space. And so when you are in a, like right now, we're, we're in a space right now, we're engaged in academic dialogue and, and reflection. And that's a space. We can move on and then start talking about how to make um, chile rellenos and the best kind of chile. Then we're moving into another different space. But then we switch back our conversations and, let's, and say, you know what? This would be a fantastic lesson. And use this. Uh, let's talk. Let's use technology to share the different spaces that we have engaged in, whether it's academically or culturally. And last night I was telling Ellen that my daughter bought. The, the Wi-Fi and I, kept, I was resistant and then I realized after engaging a little bit with her and I thought these are the kinds of tools we need to have in the classroom so that so that in the, the right now the Wi-Fi is being used you want to play tennis you pretend you're playing tennis but why not baseball uh, t um, golf how can those same tools be used in an educational way they're still having to use visual perceptual motor skills as they're learning, still having to judge the speed of the ball and let's say they're playing by baseball or the where the ball's gonna land in terms of tennis. They're still using those cognitive skills. Yes. And this but research. how how else can those like weepy games be used in educational ways? One of the ways is just what I was talking about, judging the distance. Well, then you can figure out Okay, how fast was the ball going, and you know, do all kinds of mathematical um, computations, and and bring that in so the kids get excited. We're gonna get to play weepy, we're gonna hit the ball, play tennis, or hit the throw the the ball. But then we start judging miles per hour. How is that calculated, and how how do you determine speed? Well, there's a whole other issue there because I <laughs> I um, also have problems with taking things out of context too. That I understand doing it in a, in, in, in a matter of technology, but also divorcing it from the situational context is rather interesting. That why can't you do, do the same thing you do outside? 
why can't you measure the, the, the speed oh, yeah. of a tennis ball and so forth? Yes. I, under, I understand what you're, what but you're see, saying. But see, you can have different groups. Yeah. You can have different groups. One group judging the speed of the tennis ball, the other one's judging the speed of the basketball, the other one's judging, and then you have different multiple contexts. They're all engaged. Oh. And yes, you could take it outside, but could you create those five or six different or for, or for those kids who never have access to right, those right. kinds of things, you're giving them, even though it's a virtual one, they're also learning that space of right. a tennis court, a court, or the or the um, the use of a lifelong sport right. so forth, through the use of, of virtual reality. But my question was, I, I I if something that has not been explored, I don't think is if if you have these this bilingual bicultural proficiency, what would be the impact in terms of learning this third space? this third language, this third use, it, is it, does it happen faster for kids who are bilingual, bicultural? Is it, do they see something different that monolingual kids might not? I think those are good research questions. Yes. Because I think, what, what do they bring that's specific to that? That it, can they become engineers of another kind, for example? Mm -hmm. Engineers that have, um, uh, can see bridges by, in, in a different way, the building of a bridge in a different way, or, or, by, or that that um, by that resource they might have about being bilingual, bicultural, you know, I don't know. And I think that's why we're having problems answering that question because we don't know. We don't it's a, it's not a research that it's not it's not being investigated, but definitely one that needs to be. Well, they they research, um, you know, they have found that the decision making skills right. of children that use the video games is enhanced. But they don't break it down to the, the we don't know the ethnicity of the participants to see it. But there is a very positive research. Well, there's some research that I had done when I, when I was doing my, my dissertation, uh, and that was the more proficient you were in more than one language, uh, you could you could disembed quicker than someone who's monolingual. That you could do it at a faster level. So in other words, spatial ability was enhanced by your bilingualism. So that the, the, these these kids, of course, had different kinds of scores, but they could disembed or or pull out from a maze quicker than mm -hmm. someone who's monolingual. That to me is very transferable mm -hmm. to a technical skill or a technical language. That if you can do that, then spatially, when you look at a um, at a what looks to be you know one dimensional thing, that you can actually add more more dimension to it. The other thing that, that I found, and this was very, you know, very um, limited research, was that the, these kids could, um, could see dimension in a different way that kids who are monolingual. In other words, if it was a flat object, they could see more dimension to it, and they could, they could manipulate it a little differently than someone who is monolingual. Yeah, just thinking. And I think that's intriguing. I yeah. think that's super intriguing. Just thinking of, you know, bilingualism, you know, and you think of the concept of emotional intelligence. Um, I think, personally, myself, um, if, if I'm thinking of emotional intelligence, you know, which is something that we want our children to have, and I find myself um, becoming emotional in, in, in a way that I think is negative, that I'm showing too much emotion, I can just put myself back into that mainstream world and just turn off that emotion and recalculate and become uh, analytical. Become more analytical, more linear, mm -hmm. you know, because I have the skills and just move myself out of that space. Now would a monocultural person, they don't have any space to go shift around in. And I think there's other areas other than technology that, that's wide open to scholarship. Because I know that I can do that just myself. So if I can do it, other people do it. That that is even more and more intriguing, uh -huh. uh, because I, if you look at leadership, you know we we in the U.S. culture look at leadership as an individual leading people, leading a group of people, and if you look at um, how other cultural groups yeah. identify leadership, they don't they don't consider it as a one person. They consider it can you lead a, a group. Mm -hmm. Can you take a group and do things, mm -hmm. which is it's it's um, more encompassing. Mm -hmm. So talk about just even changing how one leads, whatever one leads, mm -hmm. whether it's a country or a company. If there's a more humanistic approach or whatever, can you operate with 
larger numbers rather than just how it reflects on you as an individual. That is absolutely fascinating. And I think that's part of, in the acquisition of technology, they realize that they have to, they have, to have those shifts if they're operating mm -hmm. in, in a majority versus minority cultural group in terms of leadership. They may be the department chair and they may use some of that uh, ways of leading, leading the group, but then they may also be uh, something within the community and then they realize that's the skill that is needed. So in, what is it needed in, in terms of technology? So there may be, like you say, that cognitive shift, they'll realize this requires a different way of looking, right. approaching, thinking about it, and so I have to make that cognitive shift. Yeah, see more, more perspective, multiple perspectives. Right. Be more aware, you know, cognitively you can automatically see multiple perspectives instead of um, seeing one perspective and trying to have rash, rational. Trying to fit it in. So yeah. it fits in. Yeah. You're automatically open to a wide variety and that you then can click into the one that is a best fit. So besides just bilingualism impacting maybe your spatial abilities, your discerning and disembedding abilities, also the fact that if you're an engineer you can operate on a